Okay, so this is the second lighting tutorial um, looking at lighting, the lighting analysis tools in 3D Studio Design. And we're basically right where we left off in 3D Studio. Um, I have closed the rendering window, we have saved the file, and what we're getting ready to do is go back into Revit, make some basic modifications by adding artificial lighting, and then looking at this as sort of a round two in terms of doing an analysis with both daylighting and artificial lighting in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is save this file. And I'm just going to save this as lights, tests, sun. That way I can have sort of two different files running, one with the original file looking just at the sun, and once I import my artificial lighting, hopefully I'll remember to do another save as, and we'll save this file as lighting sun plus artificial or sun and artificial, something along those lines. So let's flip back to Revit, and we're going to add some artificial lights in. So if we look at this file, I know I'm, I made this little object completely out of components. And most Revit lights that we bring in from Revit architecture like to be hosted on either walls or roofs or something like that. So the first step that we're going to go through is actually adding, and you can see one right here. I'm going to go ahead and delete it really quick. We're going to add in both walls and ceiling elements so that we can host the lights on there, both wall sconces and then some pendant lights. So to, to add a wall in here temporarily, that we're going to, to use for sconces. I'm going to go to wall and then make a wall by face and I'm going to select that surface and you can see it's actually built a wall that's sort of nested inside the existing wall and with that done now I can come to the home tab component load family and I'm going to add in a sconce uplight right here and I'm going to say open. And now with that selected in my components property, I'm going to go ahead and place a series of those sconces. Uh, it's a little bit sloppy, but you get the idea right along that wall. Now those would not have nested in that wall without that, uh, without that wall object. In fact, if I delete this wall, so if I can select it here, if I delete that wall, well, it's wanting to select the entire component, but if I deleted that wall, it would actually remove all of those lights with it because they are hosted on the wall. So if I go to my reflected ceiling plan view, we'll see the same thing is going to happen with a pendant light mounted to the ceiling. So let's go to component, load family, light fixtures, and I'm going to use a pendant light. Let's use the disk pendant light open. And I know there's some geometry there, but it's not going to, let's, let's make sure I'm using the right thing here. We'll switch our object to the pendant light hemisphere. And you can see it's not going to replace that on the object. We actually need to build a ceiling object in first. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the home key or the home tab. I'm going to select ceiling and I'm going to sketch a ceiling in place just like that. Uh, I'm not really too, care too careful about the shape. I know I'm going to hide that later on in my view and export only my lights into 3D Studio Max. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that and let's take a look at what's happened in 3D. So right now the ceiling is actually not where I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and move to an elevation view. I'm going to select my ceiling and I'm going to move it up. I'm going to make sure to constrain is unchecked and I'm going to move the ceiling up so that the bottom edge of the ceiling lines up with the bottom edge of the component model that I created. Now I can go back to my ceiling plan view and I'm going to select my ceiling object and copy it with multiple selected so that it's on each edge that. And now I'm going to come back in and add that pendant light fixture. Here, here, etc. and so on and so forth. Okay, so if I look at this in my 3D view now, I can see that I have my lights added in where I want them to be. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate my 3D view. And I'm going to rename it Artificial Lights Export. Then I'm going to select one of my light sources and I'm going to come down to the little sunglasses right here and I'm going to isolate the category. This basically hides everything but my light fixtures and I'm going to apply that hide and isolate to this specific view. From here I can go to the big R, export FBX file, and I'm going to save this as light test artificial. Back into 3D Studio Max now, I can go to the big M, import, I'll navigate to my desktop, and I'm going to import light test artificial. Now, the one thing that I've just done here that I'm a little bit worried about, I think I'm going to have to go back a few steps, is I believe that I did not export this view correctly. Let's take a look at this really quick. If I go to my rendering dialog box and I look at my lighting setup, right now it's at exterior sun only. So while it exported the geometry, the value or the light emittance from all of those lamps is going to be zero. And that's what 3D Studio Max is going to look at and read. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go back to my big M and I'm going to reopen this file just to get me back to square one again here really quick. There we go. Now I'm going to go back into Revit and let's change this setting to exterior artificial only. The big R, export, FBX, I'll overwrite this light test's artificial file. Actually, I'm going to give it just a slightly different name, version 2. That way I know that I'm overwriting and importing the correct file. Let's try this one more time. The big M, import, light test artificial 2, open, and OK. There we go. I know this should be working now. The other version it brought the geometry in, but it wasn't actually going to bring in uh, light sources with a value. So it's brought in, brought in a few extra things as well. I don't need this second sun, so I'm going to delete it. I do not need this second camera. Those were just sort of an inherent part of the carryover. But what I'm going to do now is let's zoom in on a location right in here close to some of our light sources. And let's look at some values. 745 foot candles. This is 300 and four foot candles. Let's read our, our uh, light meter calculations and see if these lights have had any impact on the lighting whatsoever. If they do, it should be very, very subtle. Again, they're not bright lights and it is daytime out, so there, there shouldn't be a lot going on with it, but I should see some variation. So I'm going to go to Lighting Analysis, Lighting Analysis Assistant, Analysis Output, and Calculate Light Meters. So you can see it changed this foot candle reading to 308, 747. So they're definitely on and they're definitely impacting the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and close this again. And let's select our sun. And we're going to go to the blue piece of macaroni. I'm going to click the setup file. And let's set the time of day to be quite a bit later. So we're going to toggle this. this 2 o'clock, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. So from here, I should be able to go to rendering, and I'm going to look at my exposure control because I want to go back through reading the preview file and establishing an exposure control that gives me the right look to the rendering. So I'm going to use um, a preset again, Outdoor Daylight Clear Sky, and I'm going to click Render Preview. Now again, the advantage of this Render Preview is 
prior to rendering a final view, I can get an idea of what my actual exposure value should be set at. So at 15, I've just got complete black, but if I increase the exposure time on the camera, you're actually starting to see some details show up. So let's go ahead and take a look at rendering out the scene now at this time. So I'm going to go to my rendering tab, my render setup. Again, I just want to do a quick preview rendering. So I'm going to set my minimum and maximum samples at a 16th. I have already told uh, 3D Studio to provide an overlay with the foot candle readings. We want to make sure we're rendering the 3D view right here. And you know, that's probably, let me run the render preview one more time. I'm going to guess that it actually rendered the top view rather than my 3D view on that preview. So let's check this one more time. We should be able to get just a little bit more information. I'm actually seeing that lights are on and working, but I'd like to see more of a preview of that camera view that's in the scene. Ah, yeah, much better. And so I need to go back and adjust the exposure control uh, again even a little bit more for something that's starting to get the idea of a nighttime render. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the render button. And there's one other setting I want to change that this renders a little bit faster. I'm going to decrease the final gather setting right here under indirect illumination. It's set to medium right now. That'll be pretty good for a final rendering, but let's drop that down to draft so this will render a little bit faster. So you can see that we're getting foot candle readings from the artificial lighting, although they're very low, but they're, again, there's not a lot of lights over a large space, so that's probably spot on accurate. Um, we're getting the idea that this is definitely a nighttime rendering with the sky that's getting darker and the faint illumination of the lights showing up in the rendering.